press the bell icon on YouTube and don't miss another update. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Express Drives, wherein we are talking to one of the industry captains today, and we've got with us today uh, Mr. Zach Hollis, who is the person in charge of the operations for Skoda India. And well, there is a lot to talk to him regarding what Skoda is planning during these testing COVID times and what new models can we expect from Skoda. So let's dive into the conversation. So. Uh, Thank you so much, Zach, for joining us today. And it's uh, a pleasure to have you on our show today. And uh, well, a lot of our viewers have been sending us questions about Skoda. So using those and some queries that we have, I'm sure we'll have a great conversation today. So thank you once again and welcome. It's, it's fantastic. I really uh, looking forward to, to talking to you. I'm looking forward to your, your questions. I think we've always had good chats in the past and uh, I'm sure it will, will, will carry on here. So yeah, it's great. Great to be with you. Great. Thank you so much, Zach. Now, uh, Zach, of course, uh, I mean, it, it makes sense. The first question um, should be about uh, the pandemic that we all are facing. And uh, now, what has the impact been specifically on um, Skoda India? And especially given the fact that uh, you are placed in a more premium segment. So does that probably increase your exposure more? Does that affect you uh, more than mass markets or not? So this is a, obviously a big question because we the impact, the initial impact of the lockdown was very severe, of course, because all of our businesses were effectively closed. And we had very big plans for April where we planned to launch three cars. We had test drive events planned, press conferences planned. Everything was all planned for these three cars. So this all went on, on stop because one, there's no point in launching a car at that time in April, but also, you know, if I launch it, no one can attend, the travel is not possible, et cetera, et cetera. So we then put together the virtual launch, which I'm sure many of your, 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 your viewers will have seen on the 26th of May, very excited by this launch. And actually I've been really impressed by the demand for cars since the launch. So we've had very, we had a lot of um, views of the, the launch. I think in total we have had on that day, we had something like 400 million uh, levels of exposure, which was absolutely incredible. We had within 24 hours, we had 100,000 full views of the virtual press conference. Not only that is we saved a lot of money, which in today's day and age is obviously important for all businesses to look at look at their costs. So that was the first thing that happened is it made us move towards a virtual launch. We did the virtual launch quite late. We did it on the 26th of May. But mm -hmm. by the 26th of May, the majority of our dealers were actually open. So this was great because people could come into the showrooms. They could get that, that experience um, on, on top of it. Of course, what we were doing at the same time is making sure that experience they receive in the showrooms is very safe. So we've right. been working very hard on, on sanitization, on, on our personal, um, on um, social distancing, etc., to make sure that that sales experience was a safe sales experience. And since the 26th of May, we've received a lot of customer interest and taken a lot of customer orders. So I'm very, very happy with the way the launch has gone. And despite everything that's going on with the economy and COVID-19, I've taken a lot of uh, bookings, which is really, really excellent. So if you look at it from a factory um, perspective, of course, our factories in Pune and Aurangabad initially shut down. Uh, mm -hmm. Not only that is, of course, we couldn't get parts into them either. So even if we had a factory, we'd have no parts um, from there. So on, on a positive note, uh, both of our factories have now reopened. Um, the Pune factory is, is now just started running two shifts, which is excellent. But the number of jobs we can do per hour is much less than it would have been in the past. But right. the positive thing is that I have enough production to satisfy customer demand. So there's no issue um, from that point of view. And all of the workshops are open. And if you look at the, the throughput, this the number of cars going through the workshops, it's actually at 80 to 85 percent of last year's level. So I think, you know, I would say from a business business um, capacity, the, the, we've improved quite a lot. Obviously, COVID-19 is still very present in, in India. And as I said to you just before we, we put the, the recording on, let's hope that we get over this stage as, as quickly as possible. Right. And... Uh 
Uh, Zach, what kind of impact do you see uh, of this crisis right now on your uh, new model launches, especially uh, the Vision 9 concept that uh, a lot of people have been eagerly looking forward to? So our, our objective at the moment is to keep the launch dates that we've committed to. So the launch dates we committed to, which was quarter two, 2021, and then the next car, uh, the notch, the, the sedan at the end of 2021, we're working hard with the engineers, with the logistics and with the factories to keep that date. So that's that's the objective at the moment is to keep those launch dates. Um, I can't tell you at the moment whether we can achieve this, but the, the target of everybody involved is to keep those launch dates. What we've also not done is reduced investment. We may have delayed some investment. Uh, logically, to protect our own liquidity, but we've not reduced the investment in India 2.0 at all. We continue on track, um, ready to deliver these two fantastic cars in, in 2021. Um, just going back a bit to something else, you, 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 you were asking a question around how it's affected our demand for, for models. What we did is we launched with the, the Rapid, a rider, which was a, a value offer at, at 7.49, and it has really captured the market. I'm very, very happy with the way it's gone. We have a lot of orders for this car, a lot of orders for the rest of Rapid as well, but also a lot of orders for this car. And it's really taking the the, the customers who were considering a sub four meter sedan into into taking a full sized um, full size sedan. So very happy with the way it's going. And I would say that customer demand is good, particularly at, at the bottom end. Uh, Karok demand is also going quite well. We are getting 10 uh, Karak orders a day, which is really fantastic and is above my my, my expectations. So um, the market has really received our new products very well. Great. That's really nice to hear, Zach. And uh, uh, can, can you uh, tell us a bit about uh, what are your plans for the uh, Kodiak and the new Octavia? Okay. So the Kodiak, we don't have a Kodiak offering at the moment because the previous version was BS4, as you're aware. And... Our BS6 Kodiak, we plan to launch at the end of this year. So the car will come with a two-liter uh, TSI engine with 190 PS. So very powerful um, car and very efficient in terms of petrol technology. So that will be launched at the end of this year. Uh, and the new Octavia will be launched early in 2021 um, from, from CKD as well as the, the Kodiak. Um, the, the, way, I, the obvious question comes is, is diesel dead? as far as Skoda is concerned? The answer is no, and we are still working with our engineers to try and get, particularly for our bigger cars, a diesel offer in the future. I can't promise anything, but it's right. still something we are working on. Uh, do, you, do you see the, um, the absence of a diesel um, affecting uh, your sales in any significant manner? At the moment, not whatsoever. I think the, the one liter TSI uh, three-cylinder engine is very efficient. From a cost of ownership point of view, it's very similar to, to diesel. And with 200 newton meters of torque, it has a good level of, of torque as well. So that engine has been very well received by the marketplace. Um, we've yet to get people like you testing the car because of COVID-19. But I'm hoping within the next few weeks, we'll get a lot of journalists testing the car and you can see for yourself. So no, no impact uh, at the moment. Uh, and if you look at cars like Superb, we always had. 65 to 70 percent of the demand in 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 petrol anyway so at the moment no we're we're, we're not seeing any real impact in our sales from not having a diesel now given um, the kind of uh, social distancing norms that are expected to continue um, for a while now uh, there is a lot of uh, expectation that people would prefer to um, not take the public transport or cabs and want to have their own personal transport which means we could see a higher sales uh, for cars. But uh, there's also one theory that says this would affect, this would benefit used car sales more. So what is your outlook on that? And of course, uh, what is Skoda doing on the used car front? This is, this is an interesting point because we, we saw this happening in our business in China. We saw in China people shunning public transport. Obviously, China was before India. And we saw a demand for personal transport increasing or people using their personal cars more than perhaps they would have done in, in the past. So, And of course, you know, this is countered by the economic impacts of COVID-19, which could limit people's purchasing power in the future. So used cars are certainly an increased demand for used cars. So we have launched, uh, we are about to launch an, an approve as used car program. We're currently piloting it with five dealers. And what that will do is give people the, the confidence to buy a used car from a Skoda dealer. 
because we will give, you know, we will do all of the checks for you to check the, the mileage is correct, to check the car has been well serviced. And we will also supply you with, with warranty on the car as well. So we're launching an approved um, used car program and we'll be launching that in the next uh, few months. And we already have five dealers on pilot. Uh, I'm very confident that that will be successful. It's also very good for our dealers because if you look to most markets in the world, the, the used car business is an important source of dealer profitability. And uh, not only that, it's, it gives customers confidence. I personally bought an approved used car for my daughter a year ago from a dealer in the UK because I wanted that level of, of preparation of car, that level of reassurance and also that warranty for her. Um, she broke the car later, but that's another conversation. Um, <laughs> So, but anyway, come on. How many of us have, have, have damaged our first car? I think most of us probably damage our first car. So, yeah. so, but, but, you know, so we are launching such a, such a program and I'm a big fan of these approved used car programs. Now, uh, a new trend we are seeing is a growth in online sales, digital sales, digital booking. Uh, so what is your outlook on that? And uh, again, of course, from Skoda's perspective. Uh, we have the um, ability for customers to do a complete contactless um, sales experience. So the whole experience can be done online or at your premises. This has been done. Um, not only that is, we actually are we're about to launch the facility where you will be able to, to have a virtual um, walk round of the car by a sales consultant. So by using your phone or, or your tablet, you can actually be walked around the car through a video technology and and the salesman will give you a complete experience so we, we're about to we're launching that that facility as well and of course we have online booking so we have online booking where the customer can actually place a, a deposit for their car without visiting the dealership do i think this is something for the long term of the motor industry i don't personally i feel that the majority of customers in India want a showroom experience. They want a handover in the showroom. They want that experience. They want the touch and feel of the car. Nevertheless, for those customers that, that don't, we have we have the contactless um, sales experience uh, ready. We've got it available for, for customers with online booking. And we were one of the first cust um, car dealers, to car OEMs to do this because we launched this with the Octavia RS. So with the Octavia RS, this was only sold online. So literally, you went online, you picked the dealer that you want to collect the car from, you put the deposit down, you picked the color, you left your details, and then we sold. We took the booking online. So there was no dealer um, online booking available at all, and we sold we sold all the cars, all 200 cars, very quickly. So online booking is something that we developed for the RS245, and now it's something available for all of our products. And um, is there a number you can give us as in uh, right now, what percentage of uh, your bookings or sales are you getting from the online channel? Um, it's it's quite small at the moment. It's, it's quite small. So I would say, I mean, it's certainly less than 20%. Okay. All right. Apart from this, uh, Zach, recently uh, the Indian government did announce uh, a relief package. I mean, a slew of relief packages aimed at various sectors. Now, from an automotive industry's perspective, uh, do you see uh, those packages to be uh, adequate for the auto industry? And if not, uh, what more would you expect the government to do for the auto sector in India? I think um, uh, for, for me, the most important thing is that we have is consumer confidence. This is one of the most important things that we need in a business. And I think, so I don't look specifically as something for the automotive industry. I'm looking for something for the whole economy, for, for, for the economy to get back to a level of growth, to people to get back to, to working, for business confidence to come back, and of course, for consumer confidence to come back. You remember, a, a car, particularly a Skoda car, um, is one of the most expensive things people will buy. They will buy an apartment, they will buy a car. Yeah, So they have to feel good about themselves. They have to be confident about their employment. They have to be confident about their business. So we need con customer confidence to come back again, and we need economic growth uh, as well. So anything that stimulates the economy, as well as obviously supporting the economy, to me is 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 good step forward. Beyond that, uh, uh, beyond that again, uh, like you talked earlier about uh, the plant capacity, wherein you're already uh, at uh, a certain percentage compared to the last year. By when do you see you will be able to probably um, achieve uh, the uh, normal capacity once again? I think we are, we are already at the level of capacity that, that we need. Uh, we've reduced the number of jobs per hour, but we're running two shifts. And as a sales and marketing guy, 
Um, I have no issues in terms of supply and in terms of production. So at the moment, we're managing the situation quite well from that point of view. Obviously, the cost of producing the car is slightly higher, is higher now, as you'd expect, because I've got less people working at different production uh, stations and things are taking a bit longer. But from, from my perspective, um, I'm very happy with the support the factory have given us and we have the cars and the production that we need. Beyond that, uh, there's also, uh, if you could just shed some more light on what new models can we expect from Skoda, maybe in this year, whether they are variants or um, new models, or maybe at least till the um, half of next year. Okay, so as you know, we launched the three BS6 cars now. We launched the Karoq, we yeah. launched the Superb Facelift, and we launched the, the, the Rapid. So we've launched those three cars now in, in the marketplace. Um, we will, I'm looking at, at another product because that sits between a model derivative that sits between the rapid rider and the next model because there's quite a big gap in terms of pricing from that point of view so i'm hoping we can do we can do something um but the rapid is going going very well and the, and the value is, is is extremely good so this has been well received by customers at the end of this year we will launch the kodiak uh, two liter tsi as i said and next year we will launch the all new uh, octavia in in the first february i think around february time so everything is on track for those launches it's all going extremely well for us we're well supported by the team in malala boleslav in terms of, of, of new products but of course you know we're all gearing up now not only from a factory perspective but also from a um from a sales and marketing perspective ready for the launch of the india 2.0 cars the first being the mid-size suv in, in Q2, and then at the end of the year, the, the new mid-sized uh, sedan for, for India. So everything is going well. I'm very excited about the, the launches that are coming. And of course, um, ready, getting ready for 2021. And uh, Zach, uh, earlier uh, during our interaction, you did mention that uh, Skoda has taken a lot of initiatives to ensure uh, the uh, customers have a safe experience at dealerships, like sanitizing cars and uh, many such uh, steps. Now, uh, two questions. One, the past few months have been really hard on dealers, especially when you had zero sales uh, in the month of uh, uh, April. And uh, apart from that, uh, now there are additional measures which will add up to the cost. So how is Skoda ensuring profitability for its dealers? I think it's it's a tough time for, for everybody in, in, in the motor industry. It's a tough time. Um, for, for, for all brands and also for all, all, all dealers. I think there's a number of things that, that, that we are doing. The first thing is we are working very hard on developing the dealer's after-sales business because when we've got sales at a low level, what we've got to do is to generate profitability from the workshop. So there's a lot of measures that we are working on in terms of getting our workshop capacity as, up as high as we possibly can. As I said to you uh, earlier, we are at um, 700 throughputs per, per day, which is 85% of last year. So this is very good in terms of profitability. We're now um, delivering cars as well, which also supports the, the dealers, the dealers' profitability. But you know, this is not enough because we this year, last year, we sold over 15,000 cars. This year, my original plan was also to sell 15,000 cars. This won't happen now. And I think I'm working really hard to get to a figure of around 12,000 would be a good a good target for, for this year in view of what's happened with, with, with COVID-19. And so therefore we're supporting the dealers with additional with additional sustenance support as well. So we're, we're supporting them and helping them with their fixed costs because it's important that our long-term partners are all there for 2021. So we are supporting the dealers also going forward in this difficult stage, not only with supporting their fixed costs, but also liquidity because liquidity for any business is really important um, at the moment. True. And uh, one, uh, one last question, Zach. Uh, what uh, is your uh, outlook for the auto sector uh, for this year and also again for Skoda? How do you see this year uh, closing in? It's, it's difficult to do a forecast at, at the moment. Um, I mean, we certainly we're going to see a significant drop on, on, on last year maybe 15, 20% below last year for the total market. But I'm actually very positively buoyed by the market, by what's happening in June. Not only demand from, from for our cars, but also demand generally on the market is, is very strong. So I think we will get a bounce back. I think we will, um, we will, but not probably the market won't return to the level of last year until we get to the until we get to the festive period. But certainly, what's what I'm seeing in June are very positive signs. Certainly for for Skoda and hopefully for the industry as well. All right, 
uh, I think Zach, that was a great interaction uh, we've had till now, and of course, it was interesting and fast-paced, and just like Skoda cars are. So uh, that was really a, a fun conversation with you. And thank you very much for all the inputs and the insights you've provided to us. And thanks for the time you've spared um, as well. Super. You have a you have a good weekend, and as always, stay safe. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank and, you. Uh,